Adam Thomas, Scottish Boxing News here with Kieran Smith. Kieran, how are you doing today? Alright, yourself? Uh, not too bad. Just catching you before training. Um, how's it going recently? Uh, it's been going good. I've just been training twice a day in between them working as well at the moment. Um, but it's gone good and I'm just kind of waiting on a date. I'm ready. Well, I'll take the weight down, but yeah. apart from that, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you've been out for so near, like 10 months now, yeah? Uh, nearly a year, almost a year um, I've been out. I was supposed to fight for the WBO European title in September. I got cut two weeks before it, and then I'm supposed to be rescheduling for December. And the full show got pulled. Um, it kind of left me just to where I am just now. Um, and spot with managers and stuff like that. And just recently seen my MTK. I want to get the ball on again. Yeah, um, obviously, let's start with that September. Um, obviously, probably one of the biggest. Fights of your boxing well, definitely career. <laughs> the biggest fight of my professional career um, by a mile, and I was training seriously hard for it. Um, I got cut, and I think it was four or five stitches I got my eye. Um, fight got called off, and I just I, I just kept the hope um, that I would get the call again for the fight again to be on a later date, and then I did. I started the training camp again, then four weeks into training camp, got called off again. Um, and I kind of got my head down a bit um, over Christmas period and stuff like that um, about it and to be honest it's just been my coaches Peter Lynch and strength conditioning coach Ross Stewart they kept me in the gym all the time and I'm kind of a gym rat anyway I always stay in the gym it doesn't matter but it's it's kind of my bit of freedom you know what I mean yeah and I'm, I'm always here so how did you how did you injure you you know um, I, I, it was an accidental cut and sparring I got hit by an elbow um, in sparring it was completely accidental, to be honest. It, there was no maliciousness or anything like that. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was just the way I leaned back and the way somebody threw a hook and he just kind of caught me with his elbow and put completely missed me with his glove and fell in and caught me with his elbow on the top of the eye. Yeah. Um, it ends in holes for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Must be gutting trying to like keep building yourself up as well and then like. Oh, definitely. Like that. It's just, it shows you the highs and lows of boxing, though, you know what I mean? Um, I was got to be in a massive fight there. Um, to company 10 months down the line and I've not got in yet but hopefully that's that's got to be quickly resolved by MTK and I'll get the ball rolling again get a couple of fights and hopefully get any, another stage where I can get myself a title shot Yeah, um, obviously as you said you signed with MTK Global um, what was the sort of reasoning behind that and like, what are you looking forward to with them? They're the biggest management company in the world at the moment aren't they? and they're just forever growing and just They've got fighters from, I wouldn't say grassroots, but from low level domestic fighters and professional ranks to world champions. Um, they cover all areas, you know what I mean? And I've seen the work that they do and I know that they can get me in the fights. It's been proven by time and time again by MTK Global that they all, they're always making good 50 50 fights and that's the kind of fights I want to be in. Yeah. Um, what sort of date are you looking for for your next? I think it's going to be around the start of June. Um, in Scotland for my next fight there's no there's no date confirmed yet for me but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be the start of June Is that on an MTK show? Or is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah Fair enough um, Just going back to sort of the beginning how did you get into the boxing? Um, if you ever seen me and watched me um, you would never think it but I was Ricky Hatton that got me into boxing Yeah. Um, I watched a Ricky Hatton fight um, when I was on holiday and I just kind of took it for there I said to my mum and dad, I want to go to boxing, I want to go to boxing. My mum's like, I'm going to boxing. And I ended up getting taken to a kickboxing club. And it was kind of tippy tappy stuff and running around playing tig and just, it was a kid's class. And I was like, I, I don't like that. Like, I, I want to get punched and I want to punch people. Yeah. Um, so I ended up coming up to um, Spring Hill Amateur Boxing Club, still where I train today. Um, I was 10, I think, when I first came up for the first fight when I was yeah. 13. Fair enough. Um, how was your amateur career? I started off. I was going to date when I started, to be honest. Yeah. I was a small fat guy. Um, he just liked to fight. But I think my first couple of years I ended up winning a West of Scotland title, a Scottish title. I was 14, won Scotch and British. It just kind of snowballed on for the air, won the British next year. Went to the East Commonwealth Games, won a silver there. Done senior. I won quite a lot as a senior international tournaments, Scottish titles, stuff like that, representing my country at the Commonwealth Games. Um, and then I decided it was time to turn pro. Yeah. 
Um, how did you find sort of boxing when you were going through your teens? Did you find it tough, like when say everyone like your friends and stuff going? Nah, out it's, like that? it's not a thing I've ever found tough. Um, it's my life, and it's been my life since I started boxing. I've always kind of held the discipline because I used to swim when I was younger. I swam six days a week. I hated it, but I was forced to go for a while because I was really good at it. And I just mum just kept mum and dad were just at me like, come on, you're brilliant at swimming. And then I just kind of. I was like, I don't know what to do this anymore. And then they, they were like, right, fine. Go be young, like, do what you want to do. And it was only about a year later. I was like, nah, I want to, I want to box. And I think it was because I was never ever forced to ever do anything in boxing that it's it's made me always more determined myself. Like, I, I just always wanted to train. I got a bag put on my garage, used to come home from school and used to hit the punch bag. Then at seven o'clock I'd be in at training. And in the mornings I started going running. My dad started taking me running in the mornings as well. So it's just kind of always been my life and going out the weekend and stuff like that, it's, it's never really affected me. Uh -huh. Fair enough. Um, we'll see, probably one of the pinnacle for most of amateur boxers is uh, Commonwealth Games. Um, how did you find that when you like, selected and when you went to it? Um, I had to do a box off with Aston Brown for it and it was good, there was a, there was a bit of grip between us at the time and um, it actually made up for a really good fight. Yeah. And it was a very close fight, and um, one which I won, and it led me to be selected. And the the camp we had with Scotland, leading up to the Commonwealth Games, was amazing. We went out to Australia and stuff like that, and then we went to a few tournaments. And then the Commonwealth Games itself was an amazing experience, and it's it's stayed me in great stead for what, what I'm at there now because in the Commonwealth Games I, I stood in front of ten and a half thousand Scottish people. And I got the occasion get to me. Yeah. It was it just it was a brave heart stuff. Yeah. I just completely let the occasion get to me. And then what, a couple of years later I was on the record Burns undercard. And I don't know how many people were in um, the arena at the time in Hydro. I would have been I was I was a floater so I was just on just before Ricky Burns, the place was full. I just never let it get to me at all. And just it was just a learning experience and that for me it's stood me in really, really good stead. Yeah. Um you said at the start you had the, the fight off with Aston Brown. How, why was there a little bit of grip between you two? Um I, he won the first year. He won the Scottish the first year. I thought I won it. And it was just after that and it was a selection process all year so you are but it wasn't just me and Aston Brown, there was there was, other, there was two guys at, at most weights and they were all battling off for each other. But I made it good, it made it competitive, the full year was competitive and you were always, you had to be at the top of your game every tournament you went to to try and get points, get medals, get wins so that you were at the top of the board and it, it came to the point where I was winning a lot Aston had gained a lot of points you know, with good wins that he'd, he'd had in his international tournaments and it, kept, it pretty much came down to whoever wins this fight is going and then I, I won Ah, uh, it's luckily for you I guess but that's a pretty brutal way of Selection, but I suppose that's the that's, the price. That's the only that's the only uh, way it could be selected, you know, at the time. To be honest. Uh, um. Obviously, Commonwealth Games are going on at the moment. Have you managed to catch much of it at all? I kind of get it on BBC One, Red Button. Nice. Nah. Coverage is shocking. I yeah. should be covering it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, just in general, have you have you not seen anything of it then? Or? I've not really seen anything at all, apart from Sean Lazzarini this morning. And um, that was the first fight I got to I got to see was Sean Lazzarini this morning. I've just been keeping updates. I've got all the boys on Snapchat and Twitter and stuff like that and just keep getting updates off, off of that. Yeah, obviously it was a massive platform for yourself and for a lot of others that went to the last Commonwealth Games. Of course, games, right? definitely. And it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge platform if you can meddle at the Commonwealth Games. It gives you a, a huge platform to start off your pro career or continue your amateur career. I don't know how many off the top of my head have gone pro from that, that last Games, but it's a lot of them, isn't I'm, it? I'm not sure, but nah. I know that there's a good... Probably eight years, anyway, or seven or eight years that have turned professional that were in the Commonwealth Games or in the selection process for the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Um, so once you've had that June fight, is is there a title for that fight, by the way? Is it no, I don't think so. I think it's just to get the ball rolling again, hopefully, six or eight rounder. Um, I'm, I'm not getting confirmed yet, but once I get a date, I think things will start getting put in place. But I think I'll have a fight to get me back into things and then hopefully. Can start talking about titles after that. Fair enough. Um, if you're looking sort of at the end of 2018, where where would you want to be? 
Well, I'm still undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, hopefully we are a reasonable domestic title, Scottish title, um, and wanting to push forward, starting to get myself up British rankings, looking at Commonwealth title eliminators, British title eliminators, stuff like that. Um, what was what's the job that you have just now? You said earlier on. I work for a lifting shift company. It's just uh, I work three three days a week. Um, it's actually for my coach. Oh, right, right. Um, owns a company and I work three days a week just at the moment just to take me over just because I've not had a fight so long. Um, but it keeps me it keeps me going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sponsors have also been a big help for you. Oh, definitely. I would the food. So my sponsorship, I couldn't continue to do what I do, and I'd have to just go back to full time work and kind of put boxing on the sideline. To be fair, um, and can I just give a big shout out to all my sponsors? Yeah, go for it. And I'd just like to say a big thanks to Twenty Four Seven Lifting Services, um, Livingston Physiotherapy, who helped me out with all my physio in camp, pay for my medical fees every year, and um, Bryce Bowden Construction, who gets all my kit all the time. And um can get the moment. Aye, good man and good luck and best of luck when you get that fighting. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Cheers.